We are live. It is hanging out with David plus Dave on the Google Plus Hangout. I am Dave, and he is. I am David. Nice to meet you all. Nice, nice to meet you. And with us today is Jay Sider from Bandpage, capitalize the P dot com. Jay, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Nice to meet you guys. We're looking forward to speaking with Jay, learning all about him and where he did get that red hat, because it appears to be the look at that. I think it's from Linux. But oh, where? No, nothing, nothing Linux? No, nothing. Uh, Never mind. No, I'm sorry. It's N well, nerd, nerd joke. Nerd joke. <laughs> All right, so uh, David, real quick, before we go to Jay Sider, why don't we uh, have you explain who you are, why you are, and why you're on this earth? I, I, that, I don't know any of that, honestly. I don't even know why the hell I'm here. But my name is uh, David Deutsch. I run a company called Synergy Social. We do social media strategy for clients who are frightened by Facebook, terrified of Twitter, lost on LinkedIn, and I was once run over by a giant pig. So, hey, Phil, who are you? Why are you here? Why? What? I was put here on Earth to uh, interview men with big red hats, and uh, Santa Claus is tough to get at this time of year, so that's why we got yeah. Jay Snyder from Van Page. And uh, I am the chief organizer guy for You Choose, and you can find us at myyouchoose.com, and we put on benefit concerts to raise money for great causes. April 27th, come on out to Red Bank, New Jersey, or Chatham, New Jersey, for two simultaneous 80s nights to benefit Kumak, a great, pivotal New Jersey food bank. We're going to raise money. We're going to help the world. So. That's that. David, are we ready Dave, to go? Yeah, Dave, to tell, to, uh, we did it a couple times, but say again what happened, why it's so important, if you don't mind, to uh, what, what happened to them a few weeks back. Yeah, well, uh, this food bank, uh, Kumac, which is C-U-M-A-C, it's a, uh, the, the, Jay, I don't know uh, if you guys do much, and this is actually a good question that we'll get into Jay with about the uh, sort of the charity and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but Kumac is a big, uh, food bank based in Patterson, New Jersey, and it uh, has influence throughout almost the whole state of New Jersey now, especially after Hurricane Sandy. And uh, they do a lot of work and they distribute all over the place uh, food. They get a lot of donations. We're raising money for them with our events. And then about two or three weeks ago at this point, uh, they had a big break in and all their computers were stolen. And uh, it's, it's just a bummer because here they're trying to help the community and the feeling is that the community basically broke in and stole their stuff. So it's uh, important for us to you know, take places like Kumac, do what we can to raise the profile, raise awareness, raise some money, and help them do what they do best, which is help feed the uh, hungry people of uh, New Jersey. So that's uh, why it's important. Kumac 80s night, April 27th. Thank you. Yes. So we have with us today Jay Sider. Jay comes from Virginia, but he's based now in San Francisco. He's with bandpage.com. Jay, we are very excited to be here. Here's the applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to be thank here. So, so Jay, let, let's do something real quick. Since you do live in San Francisco right now, suppose David and I are multi-multi-billionaires and you're Jay Sider starting out, you're at Root Music, you're even before Bandpage, right. and, and you're looking to raise some money and we're hanging out at the wharf, and you see the two of us throwing uh, tomatoes and cabbage at the sea lions, and yep. you have 30 seconds in between our tosses to uh, give us your elevator pitch about what your, in, what your vision is for Root Music slash eventually band page. Why don't you give that to us, then we'll kind of jump from there. Cool. And was that uh, where, where we are today or before, when we were just starting? This is uh, like two, three years ago. Three years ago. That, yeah. so the clock's ticking. The clock's ticking. Come on. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, very simply put, we help music. We help connect people that make music with people that love music. Um, and so, if you are a fan and you want to know about your favorite musicians' shows and new music, photos and videos, um, you might be on Facebook and Twitter, on the artist website, on all these different places. And for me as a musician, it's hard to get that information out to all of those places uh, efficiently and effectively. And so at Bandpage, you can put in your show dates, you can put in your music, your bio, or photo, and we send that information everywhere on the internet, um, from, fan from Facebook to Pandora to your own website uh, with a few clicks of a button. You know, I, I got to say, I just love this idea of, of breaking down the gate. These gatekeepers for, you know, decades have kept talented, aspiring artists because of their petty stupidity 
um, you know, doubt and, and things like yours, like this kind of thing can really be one of the things that, including YouTube and other tools, Spotify and Pandora, to help knock down some of these some of these barriers and some of these gates. So how, so you have how many bands on, on there right now? I have over half a million. Half a million, so there's a lot. And it's the same kind of thing with Twitter or any other social site, right? So you have a ton of people and a ton of stuff. How do you stand out? What makes you stand, what makes uh, someone stand out in Bandpage? Um, well, we, uh, when I started Bandpage, um, I looked at Google and Apple and I said, I wanted to create technology as powerful as Google and design and user experience that's, a, that's as beautiful as Apple. And I want to bring that to the music space. Um, and if, you, um, if you're trying to set up your presence online right now, there are a lot of different ways to do that, but it's difficult and you have to kind of try to figure out which one to start with first. And we have a very simple uh, user experience. You sign in, you put in your uh, profile information, and you know at that point we act as your official profile online, and we help you get set up at all these other places that you should be uh, either set up online or should be sending your information to online. Um, and and right now there you know there are we there are a number of platforms that we're sending information to that nobody else can because we've done deals uh, with them. So for example. If you don't have your show date information into Bandpage, it will not show up on Pandora's concert listing. Um, and if you're, you know, playing different music festivals, like we powered uh, Midem Music Festival, we powered uh, Canadian Music Week, and um, we're about to announce a couple more. Um, where if you don't have your information into Bandpage, it's not going to show up, um, you know, across the web in those ways. So, so that's the unique uh, value that we bring, um, you know, to to the equation. Now, do you, um, and I, I know you have a blog on the on bandpage.com, which gives yeah. lots of tips tips yeah. to, um, you know, your, your clients, basically. Mm -hmm. Kind of echoing David's question, let's say I'm one of the 500,000 plus uh, bands, and I'm a brand new band, for example, who just signed on to, to Bandpage. Is it a matter of sticking out within the Bandpage community or standing out within my own fan base that is hopefully go growing because of Bandpage? Um, okay, so three weeks ago uh, we launched Bandpage Experiences. Um, and so before that time, you, you as a musician would log into Bandpage, you would create your profile, and we would send that information out. Um, now, uh, as of three weeks ago, you come and create your Bandpage profile and uh, the, the fan can see it right there on bandpage.com and we're, we still send that information out. But now on bandpage.com we're starting to you know, feature musicians um, that are there too. So we do, we do it both, we, both ways. We, we understand that fans, your fans are everywhere. Some of them like Facebook, others like Twitter or YouTube or Pandora. Um, and some of them will come directly to Bandpage, but um, instead of telling you to say, hey, you need to direct all your traffic here, we understand that your fans are everywhere. And again, coming back to the mission of connecting people who make music with people who love music, um, that's, our, that's our main focus. Um, so it's, you know, it's both, you can check them out at Bandpage, but it's also really about creating more awareness. Um, and, I'll, and I'll run a little exercise that I, that I do with a lot of people, which is, um, and I'll ask you, Double D, um, uh, of in over the last, well, uh, yeah, how many musicians do you generally like? Um, you like you listen to, um, and you, um, you know, want to go to their show or something. I'd say probably around twenty, actually. Right. The average is between like ten and forty, okay. and then so for your twenty. Um, in the last year, how many shows have you seen of those 20 bands? None. Not one. Why not? Um, convenience. I'm just honestly so busy with my business, I haven't even had time to, you know, enjoy anything. <laughs> Except, yeah. I mean, I love what I do, but that's all I do. For, it's not a good uh, how thing. Would you, how would you find out about those 20 bands' shows? I, I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't. I, I, there's no way for me to at this time. But maybe Bandpage can solve my problem? Well, yeah, but so so musicians put it out on Facebook and Twitter and these different right. places, but um, a lot of times you miss it because there's a lot of other information there. And, and so what we're solely work focused on is getting that information out there to you so that you find out about it. One of the biggest reasons people don't 
um, go to shows is because they just didn't know. I mean, it's happened right. to everybody where my favorite, you know, you say, like, my favorite band came to town. I just missed them last night because I didn't hear about it. Right. I hear about it after the fact because there's so much buzz about it. Um, and so your your return on, you know, your, your 20 bands is zero. Right. A lot of people, you know, at least know go to a couple of their 20 or 30 or 40 bands that they like um, but it's still low it's still you know 10 to 20 percent um, that I've asked and, and you guys should ask your friends too to, to make it real for you but um, you know they go, they only see 10 or 20 percent of the bands that they like um, and so you know live shows being a, a major revenue stream for the music world we're only capturing you know 20 you know 10 to 20 Thirty percent of our overall revenue off of that, then there's a lot of improvement there just by making you aware that I have a show in your town, or that hey, I put out this new song and you should listen to it, um, and hey, we have a new guitarist, and you know we talk about that in our bio, so you can read that now, right? So any piece of your profile, whether that shows, music, photos, videos, uh, or your bio, we make sure to anytime you come into band page. Uh, you know, add new information in in real time. Like a second later, you can look everywhere else online, and it'll be up to date, controlled by you. Awesome, Jay. If, if you don't mind, can we take a step back to before Bandpage, before Root Music, before just when you had the initial idea, just when this just started kind of boiling yeah. in, in your brain? How did you get it from your brain? to where you are today, especially the very, very beginning, because there's so many people who think they have the greatest idea in the world, yeah. and you, you've succeeded, you've done a tremendous job. Yes. How are people getting from the, how did, basically, how did you get from the idea to execution of the idea and getting to where you are now? Sure, so um, I've been, before I started Bandpage, I managed bands and venues for six years. I'm a musician myself, and um, so I was kind of in that world trying to make it and um, I saw a lot of inefficiencies like the ones I've just talked about that I wanted to create solutions to and so I made, I saved up a couple thousand dollars. I had really uh, a clear idea of like what needed to be solved and I talked to a lot of people about it in the same way I just asked you that question like as a fan you would you would want to know about that information and you might go to a couple shows you know even if you're busy you, you might attend a few. Um, and, and so I, I talked to a lot of people to really define what's, the, what's a real problem that people are having right now. And as, because I was managing bands and venues, I felt that every day. Um, and so I got a pretty good idea of what that was. Um, I, I, and, and I guess I came to the conclusion that anything in the world is possible. Um, there's, there's nothing that cannot be created. Um, it's just a matter of figuring it out. It's a math equation. Um, and so once I, I had that kind of epiphany, um, I went and I, I literally, I, went, I moved back to my mom's house with a couple thousand dollars and, and drew up a PowerPoint slides, uh, about 250 PowerPoint slides of like what, if I could build any website with any functionality, what would I do? Um, and so I, I penciled that out and then I, I just started beating down doors of okay, I've got this idea, now I need to go find those amazing people um, that Google and Apple have to create really powerful technology and, and designs. And so I started in my hometown in Virginia um, with uh, you know a little bit of success, but in a small mountain town. Uh, it's not full of uh, engineers and designers like San Francisco is. And so I basically um, moved out to San Francisco with a backpack on a couch uh, for four months, and every single night I went out. Um, I got myself, I guess, immersed in a place where there are a lot of the type of people that I needed to find. And I was the bottom of, uh, you know, I started at the very, very, very bottom, and I went to every single startup event, you know, meetup thing, conference, and every night, every day, from 9 a.m. to like 2 a.m., uh, I I would work my ass off and talk to people, tell them the idea, um, ask them if they knew anybody else that I could talk to. Um, I would do anything to get a meeting uh, and learn from people. And I did another thing, which was I did the yes man um, rule. 
And I guess the movie came out, you know, the Jim Carrey movie, where you know you say yes to everything. But that's what I did. Um, I said yes to everything because I knew in San Francisco, if you are, um, you know, there's a densely enough, you know, there's a dense enough population of en great engineers, designers, investors, entrepreneurs that if I said yes to everything, then I would, you know, I would, I got in a bunch of crazy situations, but I met a lot of amazing people because I put myself out there in that way. And so after talking to like a thousand people over three months, um, I found one one guy, um, Chris Tolan, who's our lead architect still today, um, and and he he got the idea. He was incredibly talented, um, you know, in the same way that folks at Google and Apple are. He's he uh, he has masters in computer science. He led a team of forty eight engineers before this, and was in a startup before uh, this one, and he came on and, and started working with me on it and then we brought on a designer, Jason Anderson, um, and they're, they were just both really incredible and we just started building like literally on, on the floor out of my basement um, and um, you know had this really clear idea again of like what we wanted to build and we started to build it. So that was kind of like phase one of uh, you know just getting things going but it's just a tremendous amount of work and energy and I had, a th I had 90 999 people say no to me and tell me it wasn't going to work and tell me that, you know, so this big company is already doing this, like, you know, you shouldn't, you know, you should just try something else and nobody gave me the, the time, you know, to, to talk to them. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities to give up during that and um, you just don't. You, you know, you keep, you keep going and um, you'll find people that want to work with you that are really good at what they do and you can at least build something and put it out to the world kind of as the first step. So that's how we got to that that first step. Awesome. Well, I'm in a very similar place right now. So it's encouraging to hear. I've, yeah. been, uh, I've been running around like a madman and I was supposed to, you know, I've, I've actually gotten to a point where I'm running around too much and I've uh, secured a pretty significant deal last week which could finally open the right doors. There you go. Um, but it took I mean, Dave knows. I mean, it's taken me a long, long time. I finally, maybe if, if things go the way I hope, which they of, of course don't, <laughs> uh, you know, might open those doors. So it's encouraging to hear that even though there are, you know, I don't, I don't think there are naysayers necessarily, but a lot of people going, kind of like, I don't understand what you're doing. They, right. they kind of, you know, look at it, you know, what do you, what, what's wrong with you? And I said, well, more than you know. Right. But, <laughs> and more than you ever want to know, but I'm still dedicated to this <laughs> Yeah. So... It's encouraging to know that, I'm, that, that, that that there is a community of people like yourself who are sort of misunderstood, but you know, ultimately successful when you keep pushing it. I'm gonna plug my computer and it's uh, getting ready to die. So one okay. Moment. I was wondering what was going. It's like, what? Are you taking your dog for a walk? He's, he's just gone. He's just leaving. He's he says, "I'm bored with this. I'm leaving." That's right. Sorry. And as you can see, he's gone. So. Shane, come yeah. back. <laughs> back. Um. This is All great. Right. Just watching you work. This this is intriguing right now. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, some really good stuff. Okay. Hey, while you're doing that, I, I think one good one good lesson, Jay, that that you taught a lot of people. Everybody, the second part of okay, I have this great idea. Um, a lot of the times, it's also why well, don't want to tell anybody because they're going to steal right. it. And it sounds like you told 999 people. Yeah, and it was only one other person who believed in it, you know. So it's not like your idea is. I mean, that that's a pretty cool lesson right there. Yeah. So I have I had a lot of people ask me this that that question, and what I I guess I generally say is trust your gut. Um, you know, do you know instead of an NDA, just just like as you're talking to somebody, just if you feel like you trust them, you know, you just be a judge of character, um, and. The, the other reality that I learned was that um, if I don't share my idea, then that person can't introduce me to the next person, like the next step up that I should be making it to, that, and then that person can't introduce me to the person that I actually ended up doing something with. And so therefore, I'm only getting kind of one degree level introductions, and I'm not um, doing everything possible to get the six degrees of separation and kind of get to get to get to that person as quickly as possible, and m a majority of the time, 
your idea is already out there. You know, it's um, but even if it's a brand new idea, nobody's like you're genius and you came up with this new thing. Um, they're, every, everybody you talk to, they're already busy with their own shit, and so they don't have time to like to to make it happen. And to actually make something happen takes more work than I ever knew and any anybody ever knows until they do it. I mean, to get Bandpage to this point, it's I didn't do. I was just telling my friend last night for the first two years, I didn't do anything. I literally like didn't go out for one night for the first two years. Because I was just heads down, doing emails, doing meetings, and all this stuff, and so it's a it's a massive amount of of commitment to like get something going and then get it started. Um, and so even if you have this great idea, that person wants you to be the leader of it, right? You you're gonna have to be the champion of it. Um, and so I guess when I look at the kind of when I look at the risk analysis, I see. Um, the actual uh, risk opportunity for somebody to take your idea, find the right team, find the right money, launch it in a way that the market likes it to be, and even takes it in the first place is very small. Um, and the reward of telling a lot of people about it um, is high in the sense that it gets you in touch with people that you need to be in touch with to build your business. Yeah, the, the non-disclosure agreement that the NDA you're talking about is always tricky. You know, I've gotten to a point where I've stopped talking specifically, but talking more generally. I think giving people a sense for the market I'm looking to target and broadly what I'm trying to do. But specifically, in terms of how I'm going to get there, I'm keeping. I kind of, I kind of have to keep close to my vest. Yeah, uh, I've been, I've been telling everybody, you know, and I'm not sure to what extent it's helped. Uh, and so I've been meeting you halfway on that. You know, where yeah. I got my NDA together, my non-disclosure agreement, and you know, anyone wants to talk to me, I'll say, "Here's what I'm looking to do. If you want more, let's have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, sign the NDA, and right. go from there." But a lot of investors, angel and VCs, they won't ever sign an NDA, and so they're well, they hear they, they hear ten pitches a day. I mean, they're not going to go, "Hey, you know," I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I know a bunch of angels and VCs, and they're sick and tired of the pitches. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and yeah, so like you're again like if you if you make an investor sign an NDA, um, well, if you try to make an investor sign an NDA, they'll say no, and therefore you won't pitch them, and therefore you won't have money in the bank to to build your process, to build your company off of. So you get to start kind of building it at the ground up, and you need to put a product out there that's successful, and you make enough money to cover your costs. And you kind of like slowly grow up from there. And, and one thing, I'm sorry, Dave, if I'm dominating the conversation here. Um, one thing I've done almost by accident, completely by accident. You know, my, my nature, for better or for worse, is just to give. I'm just the, I'm the kind of person who just gives, 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 and people mm -hmm. stop that. You know, I can't help it. I, I want to stop it, but I can't. And yeah. so I meet VCs and I give them. I give them lots of knowledge on social media and stuff like that. And don't we ask for anything in return? And what that has done is that's created a really good relationship with these people. They reach out to me now. Yeah, and yep. their trust is so. I I kind of backed into a backwards. Instead of saying, "I want, I want," it's here's something for you. Right. And they're not really accustomed to hearing that. They're kind of right. like, what's, "What's your angle?" I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know what my angle is. Yeah. Dave. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to get into going back a little bit. Um, two things. One thing that's interesting is that you're you're a musician first. I know you played violin. And, Earlier, what what's your main instrument now? Uh, my main instrument has always been voice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's a you're not a coder, you know, and, but you have this great idea. So it wasn't the fact that well, I I can't, I don't I don't know HTML or HTML5 or anything, so I can't do this. The great thing is that you didn't let that stand in your way. Yeah. The other the other side of it that's interesting is that you're. You know, your goal as a musician was to be, you know, for lack of a better phrase, a rock star. And you've actually become today's rock star, which is basically creating a company built around the music industry. And that's kind of where the industry has gone, is exactly somebody like you. You agree with that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think you can start a company regardless of your background uh, or skill set. Um, you know, if you're an engineer, then you get to start building it before. You know, you have to pitch a hundred or you know a thousand people to like start building it. 
but then you need somebody to come on with with vision or business sense, marketing, that kind of thing. The, I think the main thing that I've learned is um, do what you do really well and bring people around you that um, that do do the things really well that you don't do well. Um, and um, and and that's okay. Um, you don't as a CEO or as a founder, you don't have to know everything. Um, you but you need to not give up and believe that your product is you know, is great. That, that's what you need to do. Um, I, I know we should get into real quick because uh, we're running out of time. Um, band page experiences. Can you explain? That's sort of phase two, I would say. That's almost like band page 3.0, maybe. Right. You know, explain where you're going with that, how it affects musicians, and how you as a business, what that does for you guys. Sure. So band page experiences are the opportunity for a fan to connect with their favorite musician in a way that's never really been possible. So, for example, um, and you can see this at bandpage.com slash fans. Uh, you, can, you can see the long list. We have everybody from George Clinton to Stars to Zach Wild, Ozzy Osbourne's manager, uh, guitarist, um, and um, you know, and and on down. And so, for example, uh, the band Mum, um, for fifteen hundred bucks, um, they will write you a song personally, and they you can send in any uh, sounds like you clapping or singing or tapping on your desk, and you send them this sounds, and they'll create a song around that. Specifically for you, or the band Stars, you can um, you can get a, a backstage uh, pass where you can watch their whole show backstage for like a hundred bucks. Um, George Clinton is doing VIP meet and greets, um, and and the list goes on of you know of bands getting on Skype or Google Hangout like this to play you a few songs. Like think about your favorite band right now. Um, you know, mine's like Yay Sayer, Fleet Foxes, Radiohead, Outkast. If any of those groups would put up for like 250 bucks, 500 bucks, the ability for me to um, either watch or sit in on a recording, you know, for their next album, for two hours, three hours, that'd be that'd just be incredible. Um, and there are a lot of things that fans want that they they want to interact way more than what we in the industry allow for today. And so we want basically opening up. That door uh, to possibilities, and um, Nielsen just Nielsen, the, the data and analytics company, just came out with a study around experiences, saying that, that it's a three billion dollar market opportunity uh, for the for the music industry um, in the U.S. alone, three billion with a B. Um, and so, when you think about the um, music industry and how we create revenue right now, it's the what we were talking about before, the pillar of live music. Right in sales, uh, music sales, and th that's the only time I really interact with the band when they come to my town to play, or when they put out an album for me to listen to, and that's like two or three times a year um, that a band will come to my town, right? Um, and so if you think about that like any other business, think about your if your favorite coffee shop. This is your favorite coffee shop, but they are the door is only open to their place two or three times a year, right? Mm. It's, you know, they, if they would open it once a week, you would go in and buy the coffee once a week, maybe a couple times a day, either, or, or a couple times a week even, they could open up their doors. And so that's what experience is, is, is when you're not playing at a show in their town or putting out an album, the rest of the time you can just put something up to your fan base, a uh, way to interact with you, whether that's playing a song over Skype, whether that's writing a song for them, for your fans, whether that's um, you know when you are playing a live show, allowing them to come on play on stage and play tambourine, you know, for one song or you know any anything, basically it opens up the possibility to connect with your fans any at any time. Um, and when you look at other industries like the gaming world and the sports world, they segment their customer base um, in a really clear defined way. Um, they refer to as minnows minnows, dolphins, and whales. And it's kind of this triangle, right, where the minnows here at the bottom, there's a lot of them, uh, but they don't spend much money. And then there's a mid-tier dolphins that uh, there's a little bit less, but they're spending more money. And then the top tier, um, which is like very few people, but they're spending a lot of money. And 
in those industries, you see that the, the top tier um, and the mid tier can generate 25 to 50% of revenue. And so these are, like, if you think about a baseball team, uh, the, the minnows are the ones that watch the game every once in a while on TV. Um, the dolphins are the ones that goes to the games and get the bleacher seats and buy a hot dog. And the whales are the ones that buy front row, you know, kind of on, on field or box office seats for $100,000. Um, in the music business, um, for the for a large majority of the music business, we are s um, selling the same ticket and the same 99 cent download to minnows, dolphins, and whales. Um, and in the music industry, we call them uh, listeners, fans, and super fans. And um, and re so right now we're you know there there's I'm, say I'm your biggest fan. Um, and, and I buy a ticket to your show for you know 25 or 50 bucks, or for a big band, it's a couple hundred bucks. Um, but I'd be willing to spend you know a thousand dollars to go backstage and play tambourine uh, on stage, or for you to play me a private show, or on Skype, I'd be willing to pay a hundred bucks or 150 bucks because I'm a big, huge fan, right? This is not for every band that you're that you listen to. These are only the couple. And what we've seen is that. Um, you know, it can generate um, 25 to 50 percent of revenue um, in uh, in these other industries, and so bringing that opportunity to the music space um, and seeing live shows and music sales and then experiences as um, you know a comparable um, you know revenue stream that, that we're introducing. Huh? <laughs> that's that's a fairly detailed answer, Jay. Uh, yeah, I've thought about it a lot, you know. <laughs> That's good. Um, David, why don't you ask your final question that you usually ask. I may have one more after that, but you give it, because Jay's a great guy for this question. Hello? Yeah, um, can you hear me? I'm having problems. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, thank you, and this has been just awesome. I've just, this has been an amazing interview. Um, so very, uh, I, I like to ask, um, what can you teach us? So I'm an I'm an uh, a, 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 an entrepreneur success that hasn't happened yet. Um, there are many many people like me out there. Uh, you know, I like to say I'm on ultra lean shoestring budget, which means I'm broke. Um, but you know, there's there's a lot of people like me out there who have good ideas and good opportunities. What what have you learned in all this process, becoming very successful that you have? Can you teach us? You've already shared a lot, but what, like, gem yeah, yeah. you've already seen? Um, so I think there are a lot of a lot of different things, um, but um, one of the most important things that I've learned are the people around you. Um, and so, you know, when building your team and finding advisors um, and investors um, to, like, again, work really hard. Don't stop. To, don't choose your options until you talk to a thousand people, and then you have a number of different options of people to work with, um, or, or you know, choose from. Um, and um, yeah, make sure they're as driven as you. Make sure they're smarter than you in the things you're not good at. Um, make sure they're focused uh, on on delivering you know a similar product or idea that you want, and then. Um, you know, if you can, uh, the thing that really helps a lot is great advisors to the company, and you would be surprised. Um, even though it's a little scary sometimes to go up to somebody that's been really successful, um, to just go up to them and talk to them, and tell them your idea, and ask first of all, can they introduce you? Do like do, give me just quick feedback on my idea, and can you introduce me to somebody that you think? Would be good for what I'm doing, but then secondly, like, hey, do you mind if I shoot you an email every once in a while or call you to get advice from you um, and start building that relationship uh, because they can really um, help introduce you to the right people. So instead of um, like, so Larry Marcus was that for me. Um, he he put together the founding team of Pandora. He's helped build SoundHound. Um, and done a bunch of amazing things. He's the director, uh, managing director at Walden Capital. And 
I'm, I, I knew of him and I ran into him at a house party, like house concert kind of thing. And I went up to him kind of nervous and I stumbled over my words and I said, hi, I'm Larry. Good to meet you, Jay. <laughs> and I was, uh, I mean, I mean, hi, I'm Jay. You're Larry. Um, and, like all of that happened. And then I emailed him every other week for six months. And he emailed me back three times during that. And, um, and you know, you need to be careful of, like, what he talks about is, like, coming off as a stalker versus, like, a really interesting entrepreneur. Um, and so you need to come off as the interesting entrepreneur uh, just by being respectful of somebody's time and, and you know, everything. Um, but but because, I, because I was able to work with Larry, instead of having to go pitch 100 angel investors and um, bring on um, engineers all by myself, he could introduce me to, to people. Like, he's well-respected, and he could introduce me to people um, that trust him. And so if he's introducing me, uh, then they're, they're going to actually, like, listen to, to what I would say. They're actually going to give me an extra 10 minutes to give me advice on how I could do what I'm doing better. And, um, and so I, I think, um, I don't know if that's the, you know, the most valuable thing I, I could give, but that's, um, that's a really, really important. I think that, that helped tremendously in the success to where we are today. And I'm actually sitting in New York City. I'm here right now doing that again um, at a much higher level. Um, you know, it, it, because it makes a big difference having having really great people around you. Awesome, that is awesome. Dave, yeah. uh, fi final question, two questions, two parts, okay. I guess. Is um, how old are you, and at what point did you stop managing bands and uh, working for venues and decide this is the thing that you wanted to pursue? Band, um, bandpage.com. Yep. Uh, so I'm 28, and I decided that. I should um, go do this when uh, I, came, I came off of a tour um, and I had a couple thousand bucks saved up, like I said, I moved back to Virginia because I was either going to manage a band um, or I was going to do this idea. And the band said no. So I did the idea. <laughs> I, oh, so it was a couple, I thought earlier you had said you had a hundred thousand dollars. You had just a couple thousand. Oh, no, yeah, no. Oh, okay. That's, that in my mind I'm thinking, well, this he had a hundred thousand dollars through this oh. whole process. He was a great band manager. Oh, okay, so it was like two thousand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a, it was a couple grand, and that's why I lived in my mom's house because I didn't have to pay rent. <laughs> that makes sense. So we'll say hello to mother for us, would you? I will. <laughs> but this has really been great. Um, we really appreciate you hanging out with us because you've uh, you this is David. I would say this is in the top top three or four total interviews we've had. Just He's given us nugget after nugget. Ah, no doubt. Sean, this thanks, is, guys. This has been tremendous, and I would love to have you back on. Uh, oh, I don't know when you're leaving the city, but uh, I'd, I'd love to take a quick trip to, to just have buy you lunch or something like that. I don't know. But when, we'll, yeah. we'll talk offline. But, yeah, yeah, I'm up here till Wednesday. Okay, right on. We'll, we'll talk offline, but yeah, okay. that, that's been just tremendous. Thank you very much. That's Jay, I have no interest in buying you lunch. So. Uh, well, Fair enough. You know, I understand. <laughs> that's I had to good. buy a lot of people lunches before, so I can do it again. That's, that's cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much. We're going to end this, but uh, David, any last words? Uh, no. This is I, I'm, 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 to make me speechless. That's that's tough. So you've done a good. You've done a good. Okay. Thing. So you can find Jay Sider at Bandpage.com. That is his company. Jay is also on Twitter. Is it at Jay Sider? Yep, just the letter J, last name S I D E R. Yep. Okay, so there, there we are. So, Jay, thank you very much. And uh, three, two, one, and we're done. Three, two, one.